Hello there everyone, welcome back to another Gate Ruler video. So today I'm going to talk about uh, deck building. And uh, it's uh, it's fun, it's interesting, but it's pretty tough. And I figured that this would be a good sort of catch-all guide. Basically, this is just going to be the fundamentals and the things you should be doing and the things you should be factoring in. They should put you at like in like good sort of baseline idea for roughly what to do. This is very much a beginner guide, um, so this will be fine for you guys. But of course, if you're looking for something more in depth, then subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the bell and you'll be notified when I actually make those more in-depth guides. But for now, let's get started with the discussion. So the first thing to decide is whether you want to be playing a drive-based ruler or an energy-based ruler. Would you rather have more control over like what you're doing and have hand advantage and or would you rather sort of lean more into the RNG but have um, but sort of not have to worry about any cost management and stuff like that and just, you know, basically playing the value game, which is sort of what both, what both do. Um, now, I'm not going to tell you what to do if you are unsure. I suggest you check out my video, which it will be in a card up there, where I tell you about my experiences with all five of the rulers uh, during the first month and a bit of my playing the game. But... Let's just give you a little overview of what each one does very quickly and sort of why you'd want each one. So Worldmaster Alpha is basically the exact same as Apprentice, but the differences between the two are Apprentice gives you a deck building limit of uh, 10 levels higher. So you get a level limit of 50 here, whereas you only get a level limit of 40 in Alpha. You can see the stats are different. And the big thing for Alpha is the fact that you have... Uh, you can build with uh, all the factions. You don't have to restrict yourself to just two. Um, so both are viable currently, but Worldmaster Alpha only lets you build with cards from set one and the two starter decks. And the, uh, yeah, set one and the two starter decks. So um, whilst it's fine now, uh, very, very rapidly going to, like the second set two drops, basically, you're probably not going to be able to play with it. But for now, it's an option. Um, so I figured I'd make, and obviously for English, uh, this will be an option during set one. So I figured that would be a thing to you know consider. Uh, so those are the two. Now, if you would rather play something with three factions, but obviously the one of limits, you can play Highlander. There's another tribe based ruler. Highlander is really fun. Um, I, I would recommend it, uh, but one downside is you can only play up, up to one haunting, so you can only potentially increase your level limit by five, um, whereas you can increase it by four, uh, by 20 in uh, Apprentice and uh, Worldmaster Alpha, potentially, but you know, that's there. Um, however, um, what you get with Highlander is you get this broad range of tools that you have access to, um, which can make you really annoying to deal with. So worth keeping that in mind in consideration uh, i'm not saying there's a best uh, but uh, you know highlander all i all i will say is it's surprisingly good do not like get caught up thinking it's going to be bad or something it's good don't worry you like it's not the best but it's good um so then the other options are obviously the energy based rulers and uh, world master beta and uh, knight same kind of deal with uh, alpha and apprentice but there's no le there's no level limits in knight deck building but the um the sort of exchange for that is um whereas in the drive based rulers you don't pay costs in the knight rulers you do you pay cost equal to the level and uh, you only have 3 energy um so you're sort of deciding um, basically, do I want more versatility in what I can include in my deck and kind of just do whatever I want, um, but I have to actually pay the cost for those cards, or do I want more restrictions on my actual deck building, but uh, I don't have to worry about costs and stuff, and I can just play and uh, play the value game. Both very valid options, but uh, I figured I would give this quick little uh, introduction um, to what this will are, so you can choose which one you want to go for. Uh, and the thing is, um, to an extent, it doesn't matter because you can kind of build pretty much anything you want with either. Um, the exceptions, of course, being if you want to build something that is like entirely touchdown based, you have to go with an energy based ruler. And if you want to build something that is basically entirely overdrive based, you have to go with a drive based ruler. That's like sort of your that that is the situation. But pretty much outside of that, if you want to build like factions or whatever, you can kind of do whatever you want. So that being said, 
let's talk about the fundamentals that you need to keep in mind uh, when you are when you're building. The first thing I would recommend doing is just sitting down and reading all the four stars because those are going to be the cards you're probably going to look at and go, oh, I want to build a deck around this thing. Then uh, have a look around for in those factions and just give a little peruse of the card pool. Look, oh, what cards do I think cool? Blah, 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 blah. So, for example, you could be reading through the cards and you could come across Magvarius. You can go, wow, that's a really cool card. I wonder if there is a way to summon him more than once or because, you know, that like that's that's a really cool effect. And then, you know, you keep reading cards and you find out like, oh, wow, there is. I can play this uh, creation summon thing and I can do with this creation summon thing. I can summon this. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I, I could also summon this and that could be something that you like you're looking through and you decide and you go, wow, OK, maybe I'm going to build creation summon. Or alternatively, instead of looking for that kind of combo thing, you could just see one particular card like Malevolous Prime and you go, well, I love this card. I want to build around this one particular card. I bas I want my whole deck to just be like, get this thing out and make it super, super broken. So once you've decided the sort of focus of what your deck is going to be, then you can kind of choose which ruler would best support that core package. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you an example with Crime Noughts and you're going to sort of see my thought process and then I'll walk you through my ruler choice and then I'll walk you through um, the support additions. I've decided, okay, I want to build around Malevolous Prime and I want to build around this core of three cards, Malevolous Prime, Badmans and Cri Space uh, Criminal Organization Crime Noughts. So I've decided, okay, that's what I want to build around. And I've also decided, okay, well, I really like this Devas Beam effect. I really want to deal lots of damage uh, using Malevolous Prime. So I want to support that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to uh, TTS Deck Builder and I'm going to walk you through my process of how I would go about designing this deck. I've opened up TTS Deck Builder. If you're not 100% sure how to use this, um, then please check out my video, which will be in the card up there about uh, playing Gay Ruler on Tabletop Simulator. Obviously, you can do this on like a Word document or something as well, but I also quite like the visual um, aspect of just being able to see everything. So anyway, uh, and I've put in the ruler, so I'm building Apprentice. So that's something I'm going to have to keep in mind. Uh, I have cost limits that I need to adhere to. And uh, if you're not sure about the rules on the ruler, you can go to my Discord server where I have uh, individual deck building channels for each ruler with the ruler rules pinned. Or you can check out my how to play each ruler video, um, which if I remember, I will also <laughs> pin in the top right hand corner. There's a lot of videos I want you to watch. Anyway, so um, I want to build around Malevolous Prime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my four copies of Malevolous Prime. I've decided, yep, that is essential. Those have to go in. Um, and I've also decided that I want to play four copies of Badmans. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of cropping here in this video. <laughs> uh, cropping, editing, I think is the word that I was looking for there. Anyway, uh, and we're going to include four copies of uh, you. Now, this is a counter card. I have a counter limit of 16. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these down here where I can keep track of them. Uh, because you want to make sure you don't use too many counters, otherwise you'll be in for a bad time. Now, I want to build this based around burn. So uh, as I said, I've looked through and I've decided Atlas is where all the burn cards are. And what is a really, really good... Also, I'm not saying this deck is particularly good. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just showing an example of how I'd go about building it. So I've decided I want to go all in on building around burn Atlas. So what, what's the first thing I want to do? The absolute first thing I want to do is I want to include this guy. So this is a field spell that is going to increase my burn damage by one. So this, I think, is a really, really important uh, piece here um, that is definitely going to make your life uh, way easier in ruining your opponent's day with Malevolous Prime. Uh, now, the next thing I'm going to see is, okay, well, what's another really powerful burn card? Oh, uh, Zap, Zap, Zap. So I'm going to include four copies of Zap, 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 um, which I think is a really, really, really strong burn card. So we're going to go ahead and put these there. And the final thing I'm going to do for my counters, which uh, in this instance I've decided to do first, just because I think like it, it's good. It, it's, it's not always the best idea, but here I thought it's, I think it's fine, is I'm going to uh, include four copies of this final burn card here, which is, uh, I think it's Blaster Cannon, I believe it's called. So this is another really, really strong um, burn tool here because this is just going to let me uh, either deal two plus damage to an uh, enemy unit or it's just going to deal one damage to the opponent. So you can see all of these counters are impactful, which is an important thing, right? Either either what's going to happen 
is I'm going to hit this, which is going to let me uh, get a unit back from the discard pile, specifically a Batman's, which is nice. Potentially something else as well. We'll uh, we'll discuss that more though. Um, or I'm going to burn damage or kill a unit. Or I'm going to buff all my burn damage for the rest of the game. Or I'm going to board wipe. So lots of very, very powerful tools there. So I've got my count line up and I've got my sort of core of my deck sorted. Now I want to think about what are some other good, useful tools that I would want to include. Now, my first instinct here would be to include um, some powerful defensive tools because I think those are really important to keep in mind and you want to sort of put those relatively front and center. Um, otherwise you'll forget about them and like, yeah, just, just sort of plan for them. So uh, I want to include four copies of Etherfield because I think this is probably the best defensive tool in the game or like it's tied if it isn't. Um, and this is, uh, it's just really, really powerful. Um, sorry, this is annoying me. <laughs> it's just really, really powerful um, because it's it's free, essentially. Um, it's a free defensive tool, which is, and so it's not contributing to your level limit, which is really, really nice. Okay, so we've got those. Now, another really powerful defensive tool that I want to include is from Atlas, and I think this is probably the best, like, unit defensive tool. So this is the best, that was the best player defensive tool. This is the best unit defensive tool. Um, you could, there, there is a, an option in your Imagine, um, which is sort of best of both worlds, but it costs one. Um, which can be really annoying in Night, uh, and it's it's less annoying in Apprentice because obviously you don't pay costs, but still you have to factor it into your deck building, and that can, it can screw you over, though I do recommend um, giving it a go. So here we've got some defensive tools, but uh, now you'll notice, okay, I've got some defensive tools, but uh, come on, I got, I got no monsters to call. So let's go ahead and think, right, what are some very, very useful units you would want to play? Well, if I'm sort of leaning into this burn strategy, then... I suppose I'd want something like Victor, right? That seems pretty good. Maybe I want to play four copies of this. Again, we're just sort of, this is sort of the idea stage. Just putting in good cards will come into like sort of final refinements in a little bit. Uh, and another thing I might uh, think about is, um, oh, well, uh, if I want some good value, maybe I want to increase the value of Crime Lord Space here. And I'm also thinking, well, if there's going to be, you know, like I think this is just a generically good card, so I'm going to play four copies of Sumerian. So this is sort of my Crime Lord core at the top there, um, which I'm just going to sort like this, just so it's it's nice and obvious that this is like all the Crime Lord stuff there. Um, so we've got a we've got a, a a big a big bit of a core there. So now what I would do is I would think, okay, um, I've got a lot of stuff. Let's, uh, oh, actually, sorry, just before I do that thing, uh, I'm also going to include four copies of Crystal because this card is just generically really, really strong. It's just a generic, like, super useful tool. So we've got that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some maths, and I'm going to go, okay, what's my level limit right now? Have I gone overboard? Uh, do I need to cut things already, or do I have gaps that I need to fill? Quick maths later, uh, it turns out I'm at level limit of 56, so I'm a little bit over. So the easiest way to deal with this would just be to cut two copies of Zap, but I think Zap's a really powerful card. So what I'm more inclined to do here is uh, I'm going to cut two copies of Victor, and that's going to get us down to 52. And I'm going to oh this is still really tough actually i think what i'm going to do i'm going to cut two copies of victor and i'm going to cut two copies of zap and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in two copies of this so this is still a uh, still a really useful tool um not quite as good as a zap but still really nice but uh this is going to either deal damage or it's going to destroy sets which is obviously really nice as well so you'll see what um what's happened there is i've converted these two into these two here and i've reduced the level limit by six by reducing two level three by removing two level threes so we've got that all together so we can see though now uh i'm basically out of level spots right i've uh, I've taken them all up, so uh, what I'm going to have to do at this point is just fill the remainder of the deck with level zeros. So what are some good level zeros that will synergize? Well, uh, immediately we have a really, really obvious uh, example. We have sort of eight we can just chuck in. We're going to chuck in these four, and we're going to chuck in these four. And I'm going to explain what they do in just a moment. Three, four. So what these do... Um, so here we've got... Uh, We've got Wolf. Wolf either burns one to a unit or burns one to your opponent. So this is obviously going to scale very well with this. But also we've got Giraffe. And Giraffe is going to increase all your effect damage by one. So um, we can see we've got lots of this burn tool here. We've got, we've got a lot of burn tools. 
Um, we've got a lot of things we can do that are all synergizing. We can see we've still got some. Uh, oh, we're actually done. <laughs> we're actually done. Um, I wasn't looking at the bottom, the card limit in the bottom right. I was, uh, for some reason, just thinking that somehow I had um, just nailed it uh, in terms of the original card placement, which obviously I had not done. So let's just go ahead and shift this all over. But that's essentially the deck building process. You can sort of see what I did there. Now, uh, this list, I will also say, is 100% not in its final form. What I would do at this point is now that I've put it together, I would start sort of, you know, putting it through its paces and testing it, um, which is really, really important. Like testing your deck is sort of the most important thing and making sure that it's gonna, you know, function. Uh, so we're gonna do this and we're gonna move everything over. Don't worry, this is definitely not just wasting time. I'm pretty sure the video is way long. So there we go. You can see we've got the list there. Now, as I say, not perfect, 100% uh, there will be issues I find with this list and there'll be uh, things that I discover perhaps don't test as well. Perhaps, um, you know, perhaps I find that the crystals uh, are not very good. Um, I find that unlikely, but perhaps that's be the one I find. Perhaps I discover the wolf is really not very good. Perhaps I discover that I've got too many defensive tools and I'm just not uh, seeing enough of my aggro stuff. Perhaps I discover that I'm playing too many um, of the field spell or something. I doubt I've, but you know what I mean, like or too many giraffe or something, right? Uh, and it's at this stage that you would begin the iterative process. Um, and sort of begin to improve your deck uh, over time and make uh, lots of little adjustments, little changes. But by and large, that's sort of my process. That's how I go about doing it. Um, and hopefully this has been sort of uh, helpful for you in your deck building. Um, if you would like to see specific, uh, much more specific, obviously I gave an apprentice example here, but uh, it was pretty quick. If you would like to see um, what uh, a much more in-depth example for Knight, uh, for Highlander, for Apprentice, uh, for all of that, then please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it useful, if you did like the video. And uh, if you want to play Gate Ruler, please check out my affiliate links in the description. Uh, you don't have to use them, but if you do, it helps support the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.